June 17, 1994, the world stopped. At least that's the way Wikipedia calls it. On June 17, 1994, it was more or less a normal Friday for the most part. The NBA Finals was going on, or the NBA playoff game was happening. Bob Costas was on the call, and somewhere in the middle of the afternoon in Los Angeles, or evening here in the East Coast, O.J. Simpson started his drive, or technically Al Cowling started his drive. This was the day of the white Bronco chase that was the epitome of slow chases on the interstate. Now, Los Angeles and us around the world were used to seeing these type of things and happening live on CNN as well because that's where it came from. But the Bronco chase essentially put CNN on the map for breaking news coverage, which wasn't exactly breaking. In fact, there was other things going on except for the fact that people were glued to the television screens as this very slow chase, a white Bronco going down the highway in Los Angeles was happening. In fact, I was sitting in my dorm room in um, in, uh, in, Arkansas, in Louisiana, Western Louisiana, sitting there watching with a bunch of guys in the dorm and them all yelling at the TV because I actually owned a white Bronco at the time. So it was my white Bronco on TV in Los Angeles. It was everyone was screaming and yelling, going crazy, calling our rooms because no one had cell phones at the time. Literally, no one had cell phones at the time. Or this would have been one of the first viral moments of the world. It was captured via satellite, via your, your, your satellite trucks and your helicopters flying around covering what they did back in the day, high-speed chases for the local news. Now, what did this come about from? O.J. Simpson was about to be arrested, brought in for the murders of his ex-wife and her friend, that being Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. That was about to happen. He made some weird call someplace, wherever, and they were out and about. And for whatever reason, Al Collings was the man who was called to take O.J. back home in the very slow car chase, as talked about before. This is all relevant because this past week we had the passing of Mr. Orthal James Simpson. Passing after a, I guess, fairly brief battle with, with prostate cancer here and going to wherever he is to go for his mortal coil. I won't say it out loud, but you can guess wherever, from whatever my information is, where I think he's going and why, how he kind of deserves to be there. There's been a lot of talk in the last day or so about OJ. There's been a lot of talk about him over time. Most of that has been consistent, but a lot of talk after he's met his maker, met his mortality, on the actual implications of O.J. Simpson himself and O.J. Simpson, the car chase, and O.J. Simpson, the aftermath of what's going on. I start with the original O.J. narrative. USC all-star football player. Great player for both the Buffalo Bills and the San Francisco 49ers. In fact, uh, there was a year where he, basically when they're both going to um, the playoffs, where he had a where when he was on TV, he had a split screen jersey on. One had San Francisco, one had Buffalo on the side. He was one of the biggest guys on television for commentary. He did movies. He did the commercials, the very famous commercial for um, running through the airport. O.J. Simpson was the man. He was the man. Then he kind of stopped being the man. And then this happened, and he became O.J., just O.J. in the statement that when you say it, it's like the name that must not be said. One of the odder things about the actual court case and the circus that it was, was the verdict. O.J. Simpson was found not guilty of the murders of two people, two very white people, two people in the circles that he actually traveled in, more white, Caucasian, affluent circles, but it was seen as a boon for the black community because L.A. cops were corrupt. And the L.A. cop was who was behind O.J. going to jail, being arrested, going forward. The sort of weird thing about that is most people just sort of believe he was guilty. Even most black people seem to anecdotally believe that he had did the thing. But because of it was, you know, a big racist L.A. cop that was doing it, it was supposedly therapeutic for the actual verdict whether it was right or wrong. From there, he skirted responsibility, skirted all sorts of things, uh, had to sell a bunch of stuff to kind of stay relevant, had to kind of do all sorts of weird stuff to be in the news, and then at one point in time decided he was going to steal back his Heisman that wasn't his anymore by rights and got actual jail time for that. Did not get jail time for murder, allegedly, but jail time for stealing some stuff that belonged to him, supposedly. 
from them that O.J. Means actually became memes because memes were more a thing at that point. Then he eventually got out and he had a quiet life where every so often he'd come up, say something inappropriate, say something nobody cared to hear from him and go away. In the last couple of months, he had done a couple of videos while he was battling his cancer, basically saying he was going to be okay. He was going to win this fight as he won other fights in the past and then spend more time with his kids and just family and folks that he loved him, loved him, he loved all that stuff. I'm not sure who exactly is in the OJ crowd, who exactly is in the OJ circle at this point, but that's what his plan was. This week, we learned that he died after his battle with prostate cancer and, of course, still being the same person he always was. Now, what does that mean? I don't really know. I do know that OJ Simpson and his white Ford Bronco chase down the street and the case that riveted people for months at a time and Johnny Cochran and um, Robert Kardashian, or is it Robert Kardashian? Or the Kardashian he had, I can't remember what his first name is right now. And of course, the the, the, um, the folks of prosecution, uh, Darden and, and those folks, became household names because of this trial. People were fixated on this thing. And this was before there was any sort of really full-time coverage of stuff. CNN made this happen. It launched the careers of many a lawyer who are now news people because you needed lawyers to explain what was happening. So now they're news people. It just sort of happened. And... It is the very start of the salacious nature of news we have today. It's why we cover all the Trump rallies, because they are literally slow car chases that we're waiting for some frisk to come to. It's why we sit there and cover um, long breaking news of hurricane coverage, which we did before, but things like hurricanes and natural disasters, which is long, slow breaking news coverage of something that we see coming, and we're just sort of pouring into watching it. We can't really put all the blame on O.J. Simpson and his white Bronco, but a lot of it comes from the origins of how we cover breaking news and continuing news and things like this, going breaking away from things that may be more important, maybe more interesting. We stopped caring about the actual basketball game going on that Bob Costas was supposed to be calling and cared about the fact that Bob Costas was on the phone with O.J. Simpson while calling a basketball game. I cover news in a very odd way. I'm not a mainstream guy. I'm obviously covering on the internet in my spare time, on my spare change, if you will. But I cover news in a way where the conversational things pop up and we do our best to keep up with it. O.J. Simpson was a conversational thing where people called other folks on landline phones and said, hey, turn on your TV. We couldn't pull it up on our phones and stream it live. We couldn't text people to say, check it out. Uh, it wasn't blasting on some, some long-time stream someplace. And there weren't influencers who could instantly put up memes and posts on it going forward. We all had to sit and watch it together. And as the O.J. Simpson trial, which was a de facto sort of make good for what happened to Rodney King, even though it was a totally different situation, it lives with us forever. So if you were not of age to be conscious in 1994 when this happened, and you may have no idea what exactly this really means, trust me, it's a big deal. Go to the YouTube, Go online, look for clips of the actual coverage as it happened. Be curious about the news as it happened back 30 years ago because it's a totally different time when things weren't snippets and we had longer attention spans. This was a story that took months to actually cover. The actual coverage of the you know car chase was just turn on the cameras and follow the helicopter and wait till you got home and then arrest them and take them on. Then the case happened. Then the OJ being OJ happened. And now we have a brand new, not new anymore, 30 years old, sense of how to cover new stories because of this. Thank you for stopping by and listening to this commentary. If you enjoy it, stop by our website, thisisconversationproject.com, and consider becoming a partner, helping us out a long way with things, or visiting one of our sponsors there, and they will help us you know, fund the ways for these things here. One thing you can do that costs you very little other than time is follow us on our feeds on Facebook, or X, formerly known as Twitter, facebook.com slash this is a conversation project, and twitter.com, x.com slash th underscore conversation. Every 50 minutes, all day, all night, we're posting news stories and various sources for you to engage in. Give us the fodder to talk about in our flagship sh show, which is, of course, things you might have heard coming out every Monday through Friday morning at 5.50 a.m. Central Time. Make sure you are staying hydrated, 
staying limber and staying on task for all the grand things you're here to do because you're here to do greater things. Maybe not impact the world like O.J. Simpson case, but there are people counting on you to do great things, so do great things for them. I'm Jay Cleveland Payne. Thank you for listening.